Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the subject of Raid Enable Thunderbolt 3 enclosures from Terramaster. That is right. They were a brand that I talked about on the channel quite a lot. At the moment I'm trying to go to some extra lengths to cover Thunderbolt 3 Raid storage. Just a little bit more in the next month or so. The reason being that since the toppling of the king that was Drobo in the world of Thunderbolt 3 Raid storage, there have been a number of different contenders to the throne. Pretenders to the throne, I should say. But of all of the brands that are trying to get to the top of that particular pyramid, one of the brands that's making the most moves is Terramaster. Now, this pyramid that I mentioned, what am I talking about? Well, this is where lots of brands are trying to uh, are target photo and video editors of 1080p, 4K, even 8K, um, to allow you to have a huge archive of storage that gives you performance as well as redundancy or a safety net in case you lose your data. Now RAID 5 and RAID 6 and even RAID 10 are the most popular RAID configurations out there because they allow you to have a huge amount of storage and improved safety nets there. But Drobo, one of the reasons that these guys were so popular at the time was because they provided an unpopulated um, RAID 5 enabled so the RAID was handled inside Thunderbolt Solution. And when it comes to that in the marketplace, there's just not a lot of options out there. Which brings us back to the subject of today's video, Terra Master. Because if you've been looking for that RAID enabled solution, these guys have almost certainly appeared on your radar. And in today's video, I'm going to give you five reasons why you should definitely consider them for your Thunderbolt RAID storage, but also five reasons why you might want to stay on the fence. Let's begin. That's right, probably one of the main reasons why their RAID solutions arriving in 2, 4, 5, 6, 9 and up to 16 bays of storage why a Terramaster uh, uh, Thunderbolt RAID may have appeared on your radar is they arrive un populated now for those of you that are looking for the most simplistic easy plug and play don't want to forget about it solutions you probably have looked at solutions that have got a terabyte rating next to them they'll say 8 tb 16 tb 30 50 tb from the likes of lacy or from sandisk now they are good solutions and we'll touch on that a little bit more later on but a number of other users understand that when they buy pre-populated solutions, they, one, lose the ability to choose whichever drives they want to use, because different hard drives and SSDs have their own performance differences. But two, it allows them to be more flexible about their budget. Take this device here. This is the um, D8332. This device has got eight storage bays, ignore that one down there. Now this system allows you to run it on one drive if you choose, or you can install maybe three to four drives on day one in a RAID 5 configuration, and then later on, as time wears on, you can use the included RAID Manager Pro software to add more drives. So rather than getting a fully populated device where you can't choose the drives that goes inside, and it's all bundled into the price, so it costs you thousands upon thousands, you can get a device from Terramaster that scales from 2 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 9 to 16 TVs, uh, 16 bays of storage, and then populate them gradually as your budget or your capacity growth requires. Now, more so than that, this system arrives with support of all the different brands. If you go for a pre-populated solution from, say, Lacey, it only ever has Seagate drives. If you go for a SanDisk, it only ever has WD or SanDisk drives inside. Whereas unpopulated solutions allow you to flick between different brands, different drives, and all the different capacities out there that are available via SATA very easily. And again, that allows you to be a great deal more scaled about the storage capabilities and being an unpopulated solution and drives getting larger all the time. It allows you to grow your storage over time in a way that a pre-populated solution doesn't allow. That is right. I never thought I'd really say this about a number of Terramaster solutions, but their chassis design has actually improved substantially, and we will come back to this subject later on. But if you look at the newer generation tower chassis in 6, um, 8, and 16 TB, they arrive in these hybrid rack mount and desktop solutions here. So this is the desktop one. And it's got the handles there for those of you that are doing portable shoots that need to edit stuff it's straight after shooting or at least want to go in post-production on the fly but with loads of ventilation there completely metal chassis all the way around 
Things have come a long, long way from their early generation of chassis, which are all a bit plastic fantastic. Also, cooling has been taken into consideration a great deal more, with a huge amount of ventilation there built into the side of the device and the rear of the chassis having three very smart uh, fans that are on the rear that will learn by internal temperatures but can also be adjusted from within the software and then you've got all the ventilation there on the front a ventilation sl slip there and the trays themselves being metal click and load design so there are screws available with the kit but you don't have to but you can also just attach it click and load a drive in the metal tray ventilated metal tray to help with a uh, passive airflow all within this single chassis the design of the newer generation 2022 and 2023 generation devices is really really impressive and again i've got to give them credence for that because a lot of users that are going to be in the proximity to this device all the time are probably going to care a little bit more about how it looks That's another option, handling the RAID. And Terramaster RAID uh, devices, even from the small to the big ones, allow you to be quite flexible in how you want to deploy that RAID. Now, there are devices out there that will allow your PC or Mac system to handle the RAID. These are generally purchased as JBOD or JBOD boxes, a lot more cost effective, but at the same time, those JBOD boxes, uh, JBOD boxes require your host system and its resources to create the RAID configuration and handle the RAID configuration. Now, if you have an accidental disconnection of the device, that can be problematic. If the RAID software fails or crashes on the system, that can be problematic. If you have a critical system failure in your PC or Mac system, that can be problematic to the RAID. But moreover than anything, if you are editing large scale files, particularly again, 4K 1080p uh, video editors, if you are handling the RAID on your system, and trying to edit software, the resource consumption on your host system over Thunderbolt will spike quite substantially. That's why a lot of people go for external RAID systems. Now, the external RAID system from TerraMaster have got onboard RAID. They've got a dual uh, SOC uh, RAID on, uh, software on chip and RAID on chip uh, architectural design, a Marvel and an Intel CPU and the large scale systems, and mirror and other RAID uh, supported components inside the smaller devices as well. You can utilize the driver that gets installed and you connect the device on Thunderbolt. And there's also the RAID Manager Pro software that allows you to create the RAIDs on these systems you install the software on your system to configure the raid but the actual raid handling creation management ex uh, migration expansion is all done in the system the software on your mac or pc is just giving it command on the other hand you can still use the system as a jbod and then utilize your host system to manage the RAID if you have a very specific RAID requirement or a combination of both with you able to create multiple RAIDs within a single system if you choose. So the TerraMaster RAID enclosure family does have a lot, amount, uh, a lot of different ways in which you can manage that RAID. You're not locked into one method or the other. This is a silly small point, but I know there are users out there that will actually care. But all of the Thunderbolt RAID configuration series are designed around portability. They've all got the handles there, all sturdily put together. They're all designed to be, light is not the right word, but certainly portable. All of them from even the largest devices have got that option to be designed to be very portable. They've got great protection built in all the way around them and the metal chassis, and even the smaller devices take advantage of metal all the way around in that ventilation. That portability is a very, very small factor. But I know there are a lot of people out there that buy a RAID enclosure that move from site to site, loading it in and out of hardware trucks, and you know, load them into pelly cases and more, and that kind of portability will be quite desirable to some users, and it would be remiss of me not to at least highlight it. This often gets overlooked, but the TerraMaster family of Thunderbolt 3 RAID enclosures also have a certain degree of kind of docking station capabilities. If we go for the smaller devices, this smaller device here, the D2, it's not only got that Thunderbolt connection there that allows you to connect with the device, that 40 gigabits per second uh, connection, which is one cable going into your PC or Mac system, also allows you to take advantage of a daisy chain connection with a second one to add more 
uh, Thunderbolt related devices, not just storage. There's even a display port there that allows you to attach one or uh, allow you to attach a uh, one 1080p or 4K monitor with 8K monitor support as well in later versions of display port there. So again, this device connected via a single Thunderbolt USB type C cable there can also use that single chain line there to communicate with all the other devices that are connected. And then when you go to the larger scale Thunderbolt devices, not only does that continue, but it even improves with USB ports and some of their other devices having multiple ports as well. And once you introduce a single setup where you're running a MacBook that you go away, do a shoot, do everything you need to do, come back to your desk, put the laptop, uh, the MacBook on the table and connect a single Thunderbolt cable, this device and all the other devices around it that are connected into it interface. So a single uh, USB Type-C Thunderbolt port into your MacBook instead of taking advantage of a docking station and still have all of that storage capability cannot be underestimated. But... It has to be said that not everything is perfect. And when it comes to Terra Master, there's a reason why, although they're high up in the pecking order, when it comes to Thunderbolt RAID solutions, they are by no means at the top, still fighting for first place on the number of the brands. So let me give you five reasons why you might want to stay on the fence before you buy a Terra Master Thunderbolt RAID. That is right, as it stands right now at the end of 2022, there are no NVMe M2 SSD solutions from TerraMask. Now that's not the end of the world. You know, these larger scale RAID solutions are based on the idea of getting more affordable, but slower, but high capacity hard drives in a RAID array. But with NVMe SSDs in PCIe Gen 3 and 4 arriving at quite an attractive price point and having performance there in the thousands of megabytes, they seem to be the S they seem to be the storage media of choice for those that want to edit directly on the storage media over the 40 gigabits per second connection of Thunderbolt. And it seems really odd to me that uh, TerraMaster, with its range of Thunderbolt RAID solutions and support of M2 NVMEs on a number of their NAS devices, have still yet to release an NVMe SSD Thunderbolt RAID system for those people that may not, not want to have hundreds of terabytes of storage. But what they want is a big, solid amount of storage that they can interface with on Thunderbolt and maximize the Thunderbolt 3 40 gigabits per second there. This other point may have become very apparent up to this point, but because these chassis are almost completely metal and the larger ones have got multiple fans, they're not the quietest. They're definitely quieter than some of the earliest generation Terra Masters out there, but they're still not the quietest Thunderbolt 3 RAID solutions in the market. And particularly, once you include the metal external chassis and enterprise grade hard drive, which in of themselves make enough of a racket, the result is that uh, a Thunderbolt 3 RAID solution from TerraMaster is going to be audible. So if you plan on being very close to this device during editing, it will be noticeable. This next point involves us bringing back our old friends, the dead company Drobo, when we want to talk about one of the other reasons they were really, really popular, and that was that they had a fluid RAID system known as Beyond RAID. You could chuck in any drives or mixtures of speeds and capacity, and the Beyond RAID would work out the best available capacity and performance that it could. You wouldn't have to use the same drives altogether as you normally do in a traditional RAID, where in a traditional RAID, you could have... Uh, eight drives that were 10 terabyte and one drive that's one TB and the system will class every drive as the smallest available drive. A fluid RAID system allows you to mix and match drives and take advantage of a lot of that extra capacity, although not all. Now, why am I bringing this all up? Well, because TerraMaster does have a fluid RAID system called T-RAID on their NAS platform, but not on their DAS platform, which is a real Shame. It's one for me, one of the things that would make this brand stand out tremendously. If they were able to utilize that TerraMaster T RAID fluid and flexible RAID system on their NAS platform in their DAS platform, then we really would have a kick of it. Unfortunately, right now at the end of 2022, that is yet to happen. Now, this next point is more of a personal preference for some, but I do think it's worth highlighting that despite all the lovely things I said earlier on about the newer generation of devices released in 2022 and 2023 in their Thunderbolt RAID system, the two and the four bay chassis, they don't half look dated. Even if you, you know, like the fact there's the handle, they just look a bit old fashioned. And the silver, there's brushed metal there and a plastic front panel 
is just not very appealing to a lot of people. And I think a lot of video editors, particularly those working in Mac environments, might like the silver effect, but there's something about how much better this will look in that working environment in terms of professionalism, whereas this just looks a little bit more dated, a little bit cheaper, and I do wish they could revisit those chassis um, in the two and the four and the five bays and make them a little bit more like these. This last point is incredibly churlish, but it may be something that becomes a little bit more relevant towards the end of 2023, but right now there are no Thunderbolt 4 Terramaster raid enclosures. Ter uh, Thunderbolt 4, which has very slowly entered the market, a lot of people thought by now it would be universally available, but of course, in reality right now, Thunderbolt 4, due to reasons of the post-pandemic supply chain issues, hardware shortages, US-China trade wars, uh, climate change, and just changing in buying patterns, and a million other factors have all led to Thunderbolt 4, instead of making the enormous splash that it would uh, hopefully have been in autumn of 2022, has now kind of just gone... And there are Thunderbolt 4 docking stations, there are Thunderbolt 4 single drive externals, but nothing really in the subject of RAID. And I'm really surprised, I thought TerraMaster would be one of the first to release a Thunderbolt um, 4 RAID system. They've got the chassis in place, and it'll be a, ca a case of upgrading their existing systems. But in you know q3 q4 of 2022 they're still releasing thunderbolt 3 solutions which makes sense because the market demand is still there but it's a real shame that we haven't seen a thunderbolt 4 solution from them and hopefully this is one of those points much like the chassis design i mentioned earlier then a year from now won't be a relevant point whatsoever but this has been a should you buy and everything you need to know about thunderbolt 3 raid enclosures from terra master i've reviewed a number of their products hopefully linked below as well i hope you enjoyed it click like if you have and subscribe to learn more if you're still on the fence about what storage form your data is going to take in terms of raid and external storage for thunderbolt and you're on the fence and you're thinking about the budget or thinking about the performance take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares link below, as well as the free community support support forum, Ask NAS Compares. Both of these three platforms are there to help. Ask us a question, it's manned by me and Eddie the web guy, we will answer every question. We've got lives, we're two humans, and it might take us a bit of time to answer, but we do get round to everyone. So thank you so much if you use that service, or more importantly, if you found it useful. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.